Hey there, everybody. This is your boy, Mad Buddha, and today I am doing my first ever post-game commentary. So the idea of this is I'm going to pick one topic, either hero mechanics or map rotation, and go over just in detail the choices I'm making with regard to those subjects. So this time I'm going to be going over map rotations here on Braxis Holdout. So why I go where I go and why I think it's a really good place to go. All right, first off, we have several people who can go in the solo lane, and Vala wanted to go into the solo lane, or at least she said so initially. So I was like, all right, I can go into the 4v4. I was really scouting with a wave there. I didn't want a Sylvanas cheese on this map because if I run into four other people Sylvanas cheesing, it's not gonna be good. Okay, so here I see that only Nazebo came to lane, so I know for a fact that uh, their big group of people are going to be top and since I already have decided with my team that I want to fight the big group of people I've decided to go up top lane and like immediately so that they can't get anything done so Kerrigan's really brave she goes in there gets big combo and that's really good for us and even though we're down people we're underneath our towers and Kerrigan landed the combo so that's why I was confident going in there usually when you rotate into a situation where you have less people than the enemy it's really dangerous and you don't want to make a brazen move like that but because Kerrigan landed her skill shots it was okay and then here Illidan just kills him so so there's not a lot of things rotationally that happen early on so I'm gonna go ahead and double speed the game right now Abraxas is very simple early. Put four people in a lane to soak, one person in the other lane. I guess I could go over why it's a 4-1 split and not a 3-2. We are doing 3-2, and two, and I died there because I didn't take my W far enough. Play cry. Um, we're doing a 3-2 and because Alarak is too cool for school and he wanted to stay bottom with Vala. But usually you go with a 4-1 split because it's the safest you can do. If you go 3-2, and two, uh, you'll usually end up 2-on-1 against your opponents. But the four on three lane has more pushing power, so they'll get more accomplished. I decided to go back top here because it's two on two in bottom lane. I see that it's two on two in bottom lane. And so I've made the decision to go fight three and three. We're up a talent, and now we see that someone's bottom. So I have a choice here. I can either stay top and hold, or I can rotate bot. I choose to stay top and hold because one member of my team died right there. And even if I go down, we'll still be in a disadvantageous numbers. Like, I'll go down, but I'll be one versus three. And even if my whole team goes down, like everybody else who's alive goes down, we'd be four on three, but then they'd just recap top. So I said, decide to play a patient for now and wait. Here, my team makes the decision to move to the other point, and I have really good solo lane holding. It's, I'm really safe with my, my wave jump, and I can clear waves really fast. From, it's just, it's best for me to stay, basically. And my team that has CC and enough damage can rotate to the point. So they rotate down, they cap bottom point, and we decide to go hard here on Gul'dan. Now, this is a big thing. We are both going to die, but we get a full wave of Zerg out of this. I didn't mean to pause, sorry, guys. We get a full wave of Zerg. So even though both me and Vala died, having 100 to like, what is that, 5% worth of Zerg is completely worth it. Because now, if we look down here, sorry, I should have moved the camera sooner. If we look down here, we're going to see that we have a massive push, and that's really good for us. And Vala on maps where there's an objective that pushes over forts and towers and stuff is really good because I can disable the keep and the forts, so I go with the wave almost 100% of the time. I'm all about disabling, making our wave do even more than it otherwise could. It sucks that I died there, but just the fact that we had the wave gave us a tower, and that's going to give us an, an advantage. So we get a one level advantage, We try and press up here and get a little more. So we're not going to back up until it's either too dangerous for us to stay, or we don't, we, we can get more value going somewhere else. So we're almost out of Zerg. And we're just going to be 4-on-4. Four four. We'll be 4-on-4 four four right outside their gate. And I know that I don't want to fight them under their towers, so I decide to go all the way across the map and knock over their other wall. I know that they're sitting there clearing out the last Zerg, so I have about 10 seconds here where I can get damage done before they show up. And then they show up and the team fight breaks out. So 
They brought three people up to Illidan to make him four people, but that was still like a 4v4 in our favor. They didn't have towers to protect them, and Kerrigan got a really good combo. So, like, four, you always want to take fights where you feel good about the numbers advantage. So we had four people, they had four people, but we got a really good combo from our Kerrigan who ended up getting like an eight person MVP at the end of the game for landing really sick combos. So in the end, it works out for us. Here, uh, our Malfurion's ult got canceled. I shot the arrow hoping to get two, but at least stopped the Illidan. If Kerrigan had just walked away, she would have lived. But key point there is that I didn't die. So there's no point in me going all the way bottom now. now there would be no one to soak top. And what you want to do while you're waiting for the map objective to start is just soak lanes and get camps. So we already had people bottom. They were two on one against the gazebo. All I have to do is stand here and not die. As long as I do that, I'll be getting experience. All right, so I notice here that my team is coming back up to me, which means we're probably going to end up getting in a fight. So I was already prepared to go in before my team got there. And because of that, we got the jump on Illidan faster than he was expecting. And we end up getting a kill. So here, two kills down means that we have the advent the advantage in numbers across the map no matter where we go. So we have three on one top, and we had two on two bottom and they got a kill. So one of our team members in theory should have rotated bottom, but again I said that on Sylvanas I want to stay in the lane like if I can be the person staying and my team can be the per people leaving that's for the best because I don't contribute anything other than damage but Kerrigan and Malfurion both have stuns right so they can get more out of rotating than I can now the zerg waves on my side so I'm just gonna stay here I'm gonna push with the zerg again Sylvanas is really good at pushing with the map objective if it's a push right so the zerg wave pushes down I can just disable their keep and make the zerg so since the keeps not hitting right it's not safe for the enemy team and it, my zerg wave gets more because they're not getting hit by the keep it's a really big deal to get sylvanas on push maps like this so we're looking here to see if we can get a quick end of the game but basically it, it's going to end up being that death timers are too low and we have to back out you're going to see my team make kind of a massive mistake here when we realize that we can't stay and that's in a second here when I get hunted yeah so get hunted I double hunt wave away it's all good my team decides to stay and I'm already peace so again you don't want to die even if your team if your team's making a mistake and you have the choice of dying with your team and also making that mistake and staying alive you always pick to stay alive like your teams are going to suck sometimes, your teams are going to make mistakes, you're going to make mistakes, deaths happen, but what's important is doing the right thing. So, again, in between, in between the map objective, you want to just soak lanes and get camps. Now, both the lanes in that instance were so far pushed that it would have been way too greedy and way too risky for me to push out there and, and soak them, so I just go for the camp first. Here, we have a, a massive numbers advantage and a flank so Illidan's bottom side he doesn't have hunt or at least I think it just came up and I th also think he's out of range so basically it's, it, it's a 4v5 what the <laughs> the key point out of all of this is it's a 4v5 once again we notice like yeah we killed them but their respawn timers are so low that the best thing we can do is get a camp soak and get camps that's all you got to do in between lanes i can never say that enough there's so many people who just don't get camps or don't soak when the map objective is not going and we're all we're sitting here deliberating about whether or not we should fight under their keep 5v5 probably not the best idea so the map objective is spawning now and i go for the far one uh I only go for the far one because I was closest to it for my team out of the time and when the map objective spawns you always want to play the map objective so while the map objective is spawning we don't want to get camps we want to right do the map objective camps and map objectives swap off in a cycle throughout the game this was a bush cheese so after we decided to go bottom and get the map objective running we already knew we were in an advantageous position as a team, right? The other people had just spawned. We knew the direction they were coming from. We knew they couldn't see us if we were in the bush. So 
it's an easy kill, right? They can't get to, they can't, to be simple, they can't get to this point without walking through this bush or this bush or down here. And we knew they are up here, so they're either going to go all the way down the lane and in, in which case we just come out and give them. Or they come through here and we give them, or they come through here and we give them. So it doesn't matter what what they chose. If they chose to go this direction, they were going to die. And if they went all the way around, it would have taken too long, and we still would have gotten a 100 to 0 Zerg wave. So, bu like, bush cheeses are really good when you know where the enemy is and what direction they're coming from. Even with your, near behind, it's a great way to make a comeback. But right there, it was a way of snowballing our lead into a 100 to 0 Zerg advantage. Once again, I push with a wave. It's, it's pretty simple here. We've managed to generate a very large uh, lead, and we're just having some fun at the end. I was playing with a friend, and we said, go ham, and we did, and I died for it. But <laughs> we still end up winning the game. So that's just a little bit there about rotation as, um, well, I don't know why it sent me back to my own fountain, but hey. So <laughs> that there is just a little bit about rotation choices, why I made the choices I made to go where on the map. Oh, it actually shows the MVPs at the end? I, I, I didn't know this. I haven't watched a replay uh, since they added the MVP system. I'm pretty sure we gave Kerrigan a whole bunch. Did she get eight? No, that's right. Gul'dan got two. Well, I'll pause it there and leave you guys with that. So please subscribe if you want to. I'll always say please. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But if you want to learn more about heroes, if you want to learn about rotation, you want to learn about mechanics, then, you know, I'm your guy. So please subscribe because that would make my day. And I don't know if there's anything else YouTubers are supposed to say. But <laughs> that's it from me, y'all. So until next time.